What's going on guys? Today I wanted to bring you another one of my 2014 NAWCQ hat format decks. The deck I want to bring you today is Card Car Artifact Trap Tricks, also known as Cat. Not to be confused with Cat with a K, which is the Curry Bandit version of this deck, but this is going to be the Card Car version. This deck is very similar to Hat. Obviously, it doesn't play the hands, and that's why there's no H in that little acronym, but a lot of people will go back and forth on which version is better, cat or hat, and it really just comes down to what decks are popular at the time during that format. Obviously, the format's evolving always as more people start looking back at hat format. Before, this deck was better than hat, then people started trending and taking out a lot of those battle cards, such as like Mirror Forces and um, Dimensional Prisons and things. So the hands became more popular back in the format. So people moved away from this version and went back to hat. And then when, you know, people start putting those back in and putting more cards to out the hands, this version takes off again. And in my opinion, this deck is very, very good. It's extremely consistent and extremely good at doing what it needs to do and there is a handful of changes so let's get straight into this deck profile starting off with the monsters obviously we are playing three copies of card card d this is your main starter for this deck if you've never seen this card before what it does is it can't be special summoned and then during the main phase one in which it is normal summoned you can tribute it draw two cards, and then it becomes the end phase, and you can't special summon this turn. So the reason this is good is you're able to set all your back row and everything, summon this, and draw two cards, which drawing cards in a back row deck might seem weird, but it is a way to kind of get a plus one, as well as when you see some of the other cards we'll, we're playing, it might make sense. After that, for the artifact package, it's the same as I play in my hat build, which is three Moral Tech and two Beagle Tech. If you haven't checked out my hat deck profile, I definitely recommend checking that out. So by now, you guys should be aware of what the artifacts do, but just in case, you can set them as spell and trap cards when they're destroyed during your opponent's turn or special, uh, you're able to special summon them as monsters and then they have effects when special summoned on your opponent's turn. Moral Tech being able to pop face-up cards and Beagle Tech being able to pop your set cards which would hopefully, you know, be popping your Moral Techs, getting a summon and popping an additional card. After that, for the Trap Tricks, again, similar to my hat deck. 3 Mermelio and 2 Dianea. This is extremely standard in um, artifact trap tricks decks in general. Sorry about the glare there. So both are unaffected by whole normal trap cards. Mermelio being able to search your whole normal trap cards. Dianea being able to resummon your trap tricks monsters. And then on special summon, Mermelio obviously pop popping back row and Dianea setting your whole normal trap cards. And that's it for the main monsters you're going to see. Now going back to card card D, the reason it's good to draw cards in this version is because you play more hand traps. You're playing three Max C and two DD Crow. You can play hand traps in hat, but it's a little... They're more sided, I would say, is the best way to put it. So in this version, you're able to just draw into these as well as just drawing more back row and then kind of working more with your artifacts to kind of do the heavy lifting. So this is really cool being able to play these as well as once you start siding, you can get other hand traps if you want to side Veilers or Skullmeisters or really anything else. Um, really good at slowing down the fast stacks because obviously max C, if they do, you're going to get a lot of advantage. And then being able to get Crow and, you know, stop some of your opponent's grave things, whether that's against like Dragon Rulers, Infernity, or any other deck that relies on Graveyard. And that is it for the monsters. Moving on to the spells. Three, Artifact Ignition. Very, very standard. Being able to pop back row and set artifacts is important. Two copies of Double Cyclone, being able to pop your back row and your opponents, and then hopefully, you know, you're hitting their um, 
you're hitting your artifacts and hitting some of their back row or using it to pop some of your other back row that you'll see later on. Three, pot of duality to find more and more resources. Again, if Card Card D wasn't searching your deck fast enough, you can use duality, find more pieces that you need. And then, you know, you could even Card Card D on top of that since it'll still be the main phase one. Two copies of Soul Charge. Soul Charge is more important in this deck than it is in Hat, in my opinion, just because you find a lot of your things faster than you do in Hat. And in my opinion, a lot of the rank fives are obviously stronger than some of the rank fours, especially in a more controlly type deck. You're able to loop your resources because I'll just say in advance, you are playing Call of the Haunteds and stuff. So being able to loop those and with your fives and stuff is very, very strong. I think I said in my hat profile that usually I end up siding out Soul Charge uh, in a lot of cases or one or two. This deck, I definitely suggest keeping two in and two is like the perfect number. I don't think I would consider dropping it to one uh, or anything like that. And the last spell, one dark hole just to clear boards going second. Going into the traps, three sanctum again super standard being able to summon your artifacts on your opponent's turn you know depending on which one you summon having effects and things and then if they destroy it getting an additional pop of a card three call the haunted bringing back those artifacts or your trap tricks to say mermelio pop a back row or reset one of your whole normal traps is really really good and uh this also will work with some of the extra deck cards um, being able to uh, summon them back and then overlay others on top of it. We'll get into that when we get into it. And also being able to use this uh, once you do overlay with whatever you summon with it and double cyclone pop this in, in additional cards. So it has multiple uses. And moving on to the one of traps. One trap tricks trap hole nightmare. One bottomless. One torrential one compulse and one warning one thing i will say is i would suggest playing one breakthrough skill in this deck also some would play two but i would say for the most part a lot of the cat builds either play one breakthrough or none at all uh it, technically breakthrough counts as two negates one when it's set on the field and then one in graveyard so playing one is completely fine if i were to cut something for it I would probably say maybe like the Compulse or I guess you could technically cut like a Beagle Tech or a Double Cyclone, but everything else I think is really, really solid. I have been enjoying this deck and had a lot of success playing it and playtesting with friends, so I would say it's pretty good overall. Moving on to the extra deck, one Gaia Dragon. This is where it comes up with the Call of the Haunteds. Being able to summon back your rank fives and then just slap this on top of it and be able to do piercing damage. One Constellar M7. This is the same thing as Gaia Dragon, except you have to specifically use a Constellar. Um, and then it has another effect besides the turn that you do overlay on top of it that you're able to detach a material and then return a uh, card. I believe it might be just monsters. Let me see here. Once detach one material, yeah, target a monster on the field or graveyard and return it to hand. So good to get back resources if you need it or out other things if need be. One Zen Mayo, uh, detach a material and target two set cards on the field and destroy them. This can be monsters, spell or traps, but the thing is, is you have to target two. So that is kind of... Uh, an interesting situation if your opponent only has one set card and then you're forced to pop your own and that's not a quick effect unfortunately so if you're popping your artifacts you won't be able to get those summons and pluses from that one tyrus standard two platies this is your best five in my opinion just being able to reuse your resources like i said with uh the call of the haunteds or, you know, just a bunch of other things, being able to interrupt your opponent really, really strong. One Volcasaurus, one Durendal. And that's it for the fives and the two at the beginning. 
One thing you could also play is Shark Fortress, which would allow you to detach a material and make one of your monsters attack twice. That has some cool interactions for OTKs, but in current testing, I'm not playing that, but you definitely could try that out. Moving on to the rank fours, one Ragna Zero for any deck like that plays tankies and things. Black Ship of Corn for hands and problematic cards. One 101, one Heartland Draco, one Exiton, one Dweller, and one Rhapsody and Berserk as another version of DD Crow. But that is it for this deck profile. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely make sure to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I have a lot of hat uh, content coming soon, as always. And if you guys want to see this deck in action or other videos, definitely let me know in the comments section. And anyways, I will see you in the next video.